This week, we're going to show you how to do this. Build this rack system on our truck to carry our bikes and our kayak, which you'll see in the future. Welcome back to Zephyr Travels. My name is Randy, and this is our 2021 Ford F-150 that we recently bought. If you want to see more about that, I'll post a video up here that you can check out our truck on. And there will be more videos on the truck as far as how it tows and such. But in this video, we're going to address an issue that we have with this truck in that we don't have a way to carry our kayak. As you can see, there's nothing here. When I could put the kayak in the bed, but there's nothing here to support the kayak when I'm towing the trailer because the kayak is 14 feet long and would ex has to extend over the cab of the truck. So we need to add a rack system or something to it. Now our previous truck had a cap on the back or some people call them a camper shell and that had a rack tracks on the top that allowed us to put a Yakima rack on the top of that and it also allowed us to carry our bikes inside of it. I decided not to go that route this, with this truck for two reasons. One reason was the 2021 trucks are, the body is slightly different than the previous trucks like we had. Ours was a 2015 and 2015 to 2020, are, the bodies are essentially the same. 2021, they changed the body of it a little bit. Now, the dimensions of the bed and everything here is exactly the same, but this outer shape is a little bit different. And when I went to look to get a cap or camper shell for this truck, there was nothing really available in the company that I had used before. Um, the end, they were talking about a 12 week lead time to order one. Well, I wasn't totally happy with the cap on the truck because the truck has tinted rear windows and the cap was all tinted windows. So this rear window here was tinted and this window here was tinted. Because of that double tinting, visibility out of the back of the truck when you weren't towing was very hard. And then you know, obviously you get things inside the truck and such and it cuts away some of the visibility. Now the good thing is all these trucks today come with backup cameras and such. So it wasn't critical, but it was just made it a little bit uncomfortable to drive with it. So that was one thing I didn't like. Um, another issue that I had with the cap is it did leak. Um, we had windows along the side of the cap and I was always getting moisture in there. I don't know if the windows were vibrating loose or there was something else going on, but I noticed the carpet in the back would be wet on occasions. So I wasn't pleased about that. And I decided I wanted to go a different route. So on this truck, we're going to install what's basically considered an overland uh, rack on it. Now these racks are really designed for people who want to mount a rooftop tent on their truck and carry some other gear. They're very versatile. There's, they give you a multiple mounting points that you can mount different things on. You see these trucks, they have gas cans on the side, shovels, all kinds of things. You're, whatever you can imagine, you can put on one of these racks. So for our purposes, we're going to set up the rack so that I can install my Yakima racks on the top of it, and that'll allow me to carry the kayak. Now the rack will sit about even with the roof of the truck, so when I'm not going down the road, it's out of the most of the wind. It allows me access to reach inside still. I may have to reach over a bar or something, but there will be some level of access inside. And this cap will work with a tonneau cover. And we've already purchased a tonneau cover and have had it on the truck for most of the summer. Now it's a roll up tonneau cover, which you will see later in the video, but it goes flush across the top here. And when I wanna open it up and get access, it rolls up and actually sits on the top of the bed of the truck. That allows me to have full access to the full bed. It rolls down, it lays flush, it's watertight, and it will be lockable. 
so I can put things in the back of the truck and secure them. Now we do also carry two bicycles. Now th that was one of the nicest things about the um, camper shell cap was that we could put the bicycles inside that camper shell and lock them up and they would be with us. The downside of that was if we were going someplace and say we were going and wanted to tour a city or something for the day and we had the trailer attached, I could not take the bikes out because the tailgate will not go down with the trailer attached. So this new rack system, the one I picked out, also has racks on the side of it to carry the bikes. So I'm looking forward to see how all this works together. And so let's take a look at the system over here and go into a little bit more detail what it is. So here are all the parts for this rack system. This rack system was made by RCI out of Colorado. There was a 10 week waiting period for this. Obviously everything today is delayed in delivery. There are three cross arches that go across the bed. There are two side mounts here that allow you versatility to add things to it, like the bike rack. Um, oh, in the back there is the bike rack system. This up here is the mounting system that allows you to mount the rack to your truck with a tonneau cover. Um, basically what it does is it moves the rack out a little bit and then uses these Z brackets to go down underneath the tonneau cover and clamp to the side of the truck. Now I have made a couple of modifications to this. One of them is on these Z brackets. I wanted a more positive way to lock it and I'll show you that in a little bit more detail. And the other one is I've got two roof mount um, tracks up there that will go on the top of the rack system that allow me to mount the Yakima crossbars to it. So you'll see all that as we get it together. One other thing I've done is you can see over here I've painted all the hardware. It came with a typical nickel coating on the hardware and I didn't want those shiny pieces against all this nice black. So I painted everything with a nice black texture. So it should hold up okay. It'll help prevent a little bit of rusting. I'm sure it's, it's the nuts and such are gonna chip a little bit as I tighten them down, but I'm not concerned that much about that. I'm more concerned about those bolt heads sticking out on this, against this black surface here. I wanted everything to kind of blend in. So we're gonna start the install now. And one thing I wanna mention about installing this, this isn't meant to replace the instructions. I've spent some time reading the instructions and studying how this goes together. And I've got a pretty good understanding of how I wanna assemble it. And I encourage you, if you're considering buying one of these, to make sure you study the instructions before you install it. I may miss something along the way here and it may be critical and may affect how you install it. So please do not take this video as installation instructions for your rack if you decide to purchase one. I'm really here to kind of help you see how this works and goes together so that you can make a decision on whether this is a good solution for you or not. So one of the first steps I'm going to do is I'm going to take a few measurements. I want to make sure that the rack is centered to the bed of the truck. So I've put some tape on here. I'm going to measure the bed, the inside dimension of the bed from here to here. And I'm going to mark that down. Now this rack system is a little bit on the universal side. It is not made particularly to fit a Ford F-150. It will fit other full-size trucks. You basically order it by essentially the dimensions that you want the truck, that, that you want the rack to be, whether it's a short bed truck or a long bed truck. And then they adjust the rack to that, which, is a good thing because it now gives me some flexibility. If at some point I want to put a camper top on this or a cap, I can do that and sell this rack and it doesn't necessarily have to be sold to someone who owns an F-150. So first measurement is going to be from the inside of the bed to the tailgate. And that is 65 and a half inches. So I'm going to cut that dimension in half and I'm going to mark a center line here at 32 and three quarter inches. Okay, so I have my center line on this side. I'm gonna repeat it for that side. And then I'm gonna move on to the next step, which will be adding on the center brackets because I'm going to build the center arch first 
and then from that I'm going to extend out to the front and back arch. That way everything is stayed in line and it allows me to put the, the rack together in a way that I can do it by myself. I don't need to have extra assistance lifting it. If I were to build the whole rack on the ground, I would have to lift it up, set it, have a couple of people help me lift it up and set it on here, and then I would have to go through and adjust everything. The idea here is I'm going to put it together, adjust as I build it, and adjust as I go along, and it should work out a lot simpler. So I'm, gonna, I'm going to jump ahead to the next step, which will be putting the um, mounting brackets on here, the Z brackets and I'm going to show you those next. So these are the Z brackets that come with the setup. And basically their intent is to take this and set this on top of your bed and then clamp your tonneau cover over it. Well, I thought that that was a little bit um, iffy because I'm going to put a, you know, a fairly heavy kayak on the top of this. I want to make sure it does not move. I'm also concerned that a kayak might actually create some lift going down the road. And even though this is clamped, it could try to pull up. So my intention was to come up with a better mounting system. So I had this piece here welded to the bottom and extends it down so it goes beyond the lip of the truck. And I have this piece here that I made that will bolt to it. And basically what it's going to do, it's going to capture the bed lip. And then as I tighten up the bolts, it will clamp it in place. So that's my next step is to set these in place and get at least the center one set up, tightened up and locked into place. And then we will build the cross pieces from there. This one is installed and I will do the one on the other side and then I'll allow us to measure the distance across and we'll start building out the cross member. So the next step in assembly is to assemble this cross bracket. I did a measurement across the bed, so I know what this roughly set this up to, but I'm gonna leave it loose. As you can see, they slide in like this. And then it uses six carriage bolts, uh, washers and lock washers. Save the ones for the other side until I get this side started so nothing moves. Okay, so I've got everything, these four, on here just loosely. You can still adjust it, which we will. I'm just going to set it up this way. And be careful because I don't want it to slam and hit the truck. I'm going to get that cross measurement. So this measurement from here to here is going to be 68 and 5 eighths. And I'm not that far off. I'm about a half inch off. Now one thing I want to look at is I want to make sure that these bars are even. That's roughly four inches, four inches. So I'm going to move each of them just a little bit. 
take my measurement again just a tad over right there so now I'm going to just tighten down a couple of these bolts just to make sure nothing moves while I move it into place okay so everything's just tightened up nothing's really torqued down yet it's still I still can adjust it and move it I'm going to get the bolts that go here and get them set into place so that I can lift this up set it down put the bolts in and secure it all right now I'm going to lift this piece in hopefully everything is adjusted about right and it slides in perfectly add the bolts and again we're just we're going to do everything kind of on the loose side drop the nut we'll get that and two more on this side i'm going to tighten them up there first first crossbar is in place now we go about setting up the positions for the other two and i'll show you my idea on how i'm going to do that now to set up the positioning for the other two crossbars i'm going to use the side piece here mount it in place and then from here i can get my positioning from each side so let's do that and apparently one of my neighbors is having a party so if you hear music in the background hopefully i don't get copyrights for it Now do the one on the other side, and then we're ready to add in the cross piece. Okay, so now you can see we've got the cross piece on here, the, or the side plate on here. And I've adjusted and set it up so that my mounting brackets are just in line to where the, the next cross piece will go. I've done that on both sides, and the next step will be to assemble and set up these two additional cross pieces. So we'll move to that, and we'll show you the next steps. Okay, now you can see that we have all the crossbars mounted. We have the center um, sidebar or side piece here that you can attach things to on, in place. And I've gone through and I've tightened everything up. So everything's pretty solid at this point. Now there's two crossbars that go on the top. I have yet to put those on and we're gonna do those next. The final piece to install on our rack system is gonna be these top rails. Now they're gonna go from front to back across the three um, cross pieces and for our setup I'm going to add these tracks to them and they bolt on using these T-bolts which go right in the end here and I'm going to use these same T-bolts to mount both pieces together and onto the main rack instead of using the original supply bolts. This will give us a way to mount the Yakima um, crossbars on here. One of the first things I'm going to do <clears throat> is I'm going to set a few of these bolts into this bar just hand tight. Now these are kind of in the middle and they're mostly hold to hold the rack on so I'm not going to um, worry about them having to be between other pieces but these square holes here, here, and here We'll hold, we'll bolt this piece down to the main rack. Each 
cross or each track will have nine nine each track will have seven bolts now this this track setup is actually designed for installing on the top of a pickup truck cap or something like that I actually had to cut these down just a little bit because they're a little oversized they're made by Rhino Rhino racks All right, so now we'll move all this to the top of the truck and finish our assembly up there. All right, so now I've got the top rail on the rack here and the special bolts through it. Now this is the track for the Yakima rack, so this will slide into the top. Now there, the nuts on the bottom of that, um, those special bolts are just hand nuts, so I'm going to just start tightening them up. When I get them snugged, I'm going to adjust the rack so it's in position. Everything's in place, tightened up. There are adapters to go on here to carry the uh, Yakima rack. I'm get those and see if they fit. And that will be the next step. Well, the bike rack consists of two of these brackets like this that mount on two of the cross rails. And I'll put those on next. And then there's attachments on here to attach the bikes too. So first let's get these on, then I'll show you the rest. So this is how the bikes will mount to the rack. You can see the front fork is supported by this attachment here. The rear tire sits on this carrier here. And then I've used two straps and a diagonal to hold the bike in place. I think this will work pretty good. The next thing to do is to try to find a cover that will cover the bike so that one thing they're not as visible as what they are. And also to keep them out of the weather as we drive. Because you know you can't always have a sunny day. Well, I think this is where we're going to end this video with this rack uh, attachment. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got something out of it. If you did, um, give us a thumbs up. If you have any questions about this rack system, please leave a comment. I'll answer your questions as soon as I can. And if you're new to our channel and you want to see more of our travel videos or how-to videos, be sure to subscribe to our channel. Until the next time, everybody, we will see you down the road. Bye.